May the peace of God be with us all. Good morning. And a very warm welcome to Duffus Kirk this morning. A special welcome to those joining us now or later on over the live stream. It's great to be gathered together wherever we are. And we'll maybe take a moment, we'll, we'll smile and wave to the live stream, the folk joining us on live stream. And we'll smile and we can turn around and smile and wave to the folk around us too. And for those of you in the building, you're very welcome to stay and catch up with one another over tea and coffee in the hall afterwards. And also in the hall afterwards, for anyone here and for anyone indeed who, who comes along, we have the, the next, this week's version of our garden swap, which we're doing after 11.30 after each service all through April. Um, this week we have, as well as a good collection of pots of every possible size, um, we have, thanks to Anne-Marie, a big collection of plants and there are seeds, so there's seeds and plants, pots and a few garden miscellaneous. Um, <laughs> so do, do take a look, it's, it's all free, even if you haven't taken something, brought something, please take things if you think you can use them, it gets things, keeps things in use. And you can, and hopefully it's well enough clear from, from the tea and coffee half of the, t the hall. Today we also celebrate communion. This is an open table. It is a table of the Lord. We have offered non-alcoholic grape juice. We offer bread free of gluten and dairy. So we hope this is an inclusive opportunity for all who want to accept Jesus' invitation to come and take and eat. At home you may want to pause the video or you may want to use one of the hymns to go and find something to eat and drink so that you can share and we can share communion all together later on. For those of you in the building, if you can check that wherever you're sitting, each person has access to two wee glasses, one with bread and one with grape juice in it. This is the time to check, probably. I'll look fairly happy. Thank you. And during communion, I'll indicate when we will take the, all take the bread and the juice together. The church news notices are mostly on the order of service, I think. I've mentioned the garden swap this afternoon. Um, there's a chance to encounter God in creation, hopefully in sunshine today, um, at Forest Church along meeting at the car park by Duffus House. Um, tomorrow, and, and, well, I suppose two things about tomorrow. One is to say that the sad news that, that the funeral of Annette Ralph of Hopeman will take place tomorrow afternoon in Hopeman Kirk at 1.45. And therefore, the social hub that would normally be in the Kirk Hall on a Monday afternoon, tomorrow afternoon only, is going to meet in the back hall of Hopeman Memorial Hall. So the Hopeman social hub tomorrow will be in the, the Memorial Hall, and Annette's funeral is at 1.45 tomorrow in Hopeman. The other thing to mention is that I am, I am working today until Wednesday and then I'm on holiday for two weeks. I leave you in ve the very good hands of Anne-Marie and Christine and Jeff and their contact details are all on the order of service if, if you need them. And the rest, oh no, and the other thing is a big plug for the daffodil tea. See how I write things down and ignore it. Big plug for the daffodil tea next Saturday. Um, next Saturday afternoon in Hopeman Kirk Hall. Please come, please tell people, please invite people. It works best if lots of people come along and that needs lots of people to know about it. Also, if you have anything that you can contribute to a sales table, please bring it along on the day or speak to Heather, who's, wait, who's going to wave and uh, in her lovely snazzy, there's a purple corner up at the back there. Um, so please bring things to the sales table, but most importantly, come along and see others and invite others. Before we move into the full part of our service, I thought we might also pause again today and light a candle to represent prayers for peace. Um, yes, the world is a troubled place and it didn't get last, less troubled last night. Um, and so I thought we might light a candle that holds our prayers, that represents our prayers for peace through the service. Prayers that don't always have words and don't always certainly don't have easy answers. So. Let me 
pray, God, grant us peace. Grant the world peace. Amen. For our gathering words, we're going to use words from Malawi, from our sisters and brothers in the church in Malawi. They're on the screen. They're actually words of a hymn, a wee song that's in the hymn book at 496, if you want to look it up. But they're also on the screen here for us. We dedicate this time to God. Humbly in your sight we come together, Lord. Grant us now the blessing of your presence here. These, our hearts, are yours. We give them to you, Lord. Purify our love to make it like your own. These, our eyes, are yours. We give them to you, Lord. May we always see your world as with your sight. These, our hands, are yours. We give them to you, Lord. Give them strength and skill to do all work for you. These, our feet, are yours. We give them to you, Lord. May we always walk the path of life with you. These, our tongues, are yours. We give them to you, Lord. May we speak your healing words of life and truth. These, our ears, are yours. We give them to you, Lord. Open them to hear the gospel as from you. Our whole selves are yours. We give them to you, Lord. Take us now and keep us yours forevermore. We are still in the Easter season. So we're going to sing through Jesus' story and the Easter story and the Easter message in our opening song. Hymn 404, the Lord of the Dance. I danced in the morning when the world was begun. Hymn 404 and on the screen.
We open ourselves to God. Let us pray. Easter God, creator of Earth's amazing web of life, which we see awakening around us. Thank you for life, for warmth, for all that grows and thrives. Easter God, Jesus risen in mystery and showing us that you share life's wounds and scars. Thank you for being with us and for your words of peace, forgiveness and invitation. Easter God, Holy Spirit, breath of life, making all things new. Help us to accept your forgiveness and freedom so we can be made new and help change the world. Easter God, community of love, Father, Son and Spirit, bringing all things together into new fullness, gather us with each other in this place and across all places, in this time and across all times, with all your people, learning to live and love in your ways. Amen. God is loving and generous, giving us life in all its fullness. We come, however hesitantly, to encounter God together, and we may want to respond to God's gifts with our own generosity. And while our response and offering to God is symbolized by these gifts of money in the plate, we may also be offering God our time and energy, our skills and abilities. Many of us give financially in other ways, and we work with God in the church and other spheres. Together we offer this time and our attention to God, opening ourselves to give and to receive. Join me in prayer again. God, giver of life, we offer to you what we can of our lives, of who we are, of what we have, of what we can do. Accept and use what we bring, transforming us and the world with your life-changing love. Through Jesus, our friend and Lord, and the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Following a chat at the board at the beginning of the week, and to enable us all, whether, whether we are here regularly or not, to give money as we are able, there are now wee envelopes in the pew, and a reminder that there is always another opportunity to give into a collection plate on the way out, if you wish and are able but we offer ourselves what we can to God. And now we turn to our first reading, which we are singing together today. The opening words of Psalm 40, set to the familiar tune of Amazing Grace. Psalm 40, hymn 31 in the book, I waited patiently for God. Our first reading.
we hear our first reading, our readings today from, from Rose. Thank you. Our Old, read, uh, Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 9. God calls Isaiah to be a prophet. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was sitting on his throne, high and exalted, and his robe filled the whole temple. Round him flaming creatures were standing, each of which had six wings. Each creature covered its face with two wings and its body with two, and used the other two for flying. They were calling out to each other, Holy, 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 the Lord Almighty is holy. His glory fills the world. The sound of their voices made the foundation of the temple shake, and the temple itself was filled with smoke. I said, There is no hope for me. I am doomed, because every word that passes my lips is sinful. And I live among a people whose every word is sinful. And yet, with my own eyes, I have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the creatures flew down to me, carrying a burning coal that he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with the burning coal and said, This has touched your lips, and now your guilt is gone, and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord say, Whom shall I send? Who will be our messenger? I answered, I will go. Send me. So he told me to go and give the people this message. No matter how much you listen, you will not understand. No matter how much you look, you will not know what is happening. And our New Testament reading comes from Luke chapter 24, starting at verse 36. Now, the two people who had met Jesus on the road to Emmaus hurried back to Jerusalem to tell them the news. Now, while the two were telling them this, suddenly the Lord himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were terrified, thinking that they were seeing a ghost. But he said to them, Why are you alarmed? Why are these doubts coming up in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet, and see that it is I myself. Feel me, and you will know, for a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. He said this, and showed them his hands and his feet. They still couldn't believe. They were so full of joy and wonder. So he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave them a piece of cooked fish, which he took and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are the very things I told you about while I was still with you. Everything written about me in the law of Moses, the writings of the prophets and the Psalms, had to come true. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, This is what is written. The Messiah must suffer and must rise from death three days later. And in his name, the message about repentance and forgiveness of sins must be preached to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. Thanks be to God for these readings. Amen. Thank you, Rose. I've got a few riddles for you as we start today. These ones are who am I riddles. I think the first one's reasonably easy. I am a man that stands in the cold. When I feel the sun, I start to run. Who am I? Snowman. Yeah. So that's the easy one to get you warmed up. Oh no, the next one. I have a dozen haircuts a day, yet I still have lots of hair. Who am I? 
I have a dozen haircuts a day, yet I still have lots of hair. Who am I? A barber. Did someone say? Barber, hairdresser. Yeah. And this is, this is the trickiest one, I think. I dig out tiny caves and store gold and silver in them. I build bridges and make crowns. Everyone needs my help at some point, but many people are afraid of me. Who am I? Dentist. Oh, see, that was the one that I looked at first. Yeah, digging out tiny caves and storing gold and silver, building bridges, making crowns. Everyone needs their help at some point, my help at some point, but many people are afraid of me. Who am I? A dentist. Who am I? Is a really big question. And it's a question we can answer in any number of ways. And one answer, I think, is that we are each a whole person of body, mind, and spirit or soul. Even that's a bit simplified. We are complicated human beings with lots of aspects all coming together and interrelating, including all our histories and experiences. But we're going to use that idea of wholeness to explore who we are today. We are whole human beings, a complex combination of body and mind and spirit or soul. And wholeness in ourselves is one way of understanding what God wishes for us all. And one way of understanding what Jesus keeps wishing for his friends and followers when he meets them after he has risen from death. As Christine helped us explore last week, Jesus says over and over again in all the stories of Easter, peace be with you. The Hebrew word for peace is shalom, which encompasses lots of aspects of peace and more. So many people understand it as wholeness. So what God wants for us, what Jesus wishes for us is wholeness, peace, Shalom. But can we be at peace? Can we feel whole in our body, mind, and spirit? Because I think that many of us, probably most of us, often feel a bit inadequate in body, mind, or spirit. Take our bodies. We live in a culture that seems to generate very high expectations of our bodies. Do we feel too tall or too small, too thin or not thin enough? Are we beach body ready in April? Is our age showing in our skin or hair? Hands up anyone who's not entirely happy about how their body is. Anyone? Everyone's entirely happy? No, there's a few. (laughs) And of course, we have aches and pains. We have ill health and impairments that mean we need help. Glasses, hearing aids, walking sticks, medication, all sorts of things that creative people have been inventing for centuries. Being perfectly fit and able-bodied is probably very much a minor minority condition for human beings. And that applies to Jesus too. His body took a terrible beating before he was killed and his death did more damage. Even after the mystery of him being raised from death, he is still wounded and scarred. He shows his friends his hands and his feet. And he wants to eat, like all of us. Many of us feel inadequate in our bodies. We don't feel whole in body, mind, and spirit. What about our minds? Do we think we have everything worked out? If so, again, I think we'd probably be in a minority. For example, take the prophet Isaiah, trying to make sense of this vision he was having. Indescribable flaming creatures with six wings in the temple. What were they? Was it a dream? How could he explain the mystery? Or another example of mystery. Jesus' friends are in a locked room in Jerusalem and suddenly Jesus appears. Jesus, who was killed three days before, but now apparently alive. Was he a ghost? Were they dreaming? 
Our minds can feel very inadequate faced with mystery. They can also feel inadequate in face of life on earth. The horrors of disasters and violence, the unfairness of diagnoses and deaths, the difficulty of explaining so much of what people and planet experience. And despite centuries of study, our minds can still feel inadequate exploring stories, tradition, and wisdom written down about God. Jesus' friends found that hard too. How can a human mind grasp God's stuff and translate from other times, cultures, and languages into our time and place? Many of us feel inadequate in our minds. We don't feel whole in body, mind, and spirit. What about our spirits, our souls? Well, what do we mean by that anyway? Perhaps our essence, who we are in our deepest selves. Now that overlaps with our bodies and minds because low physical and mental health can affect who we feel we are. As I think Psalm 40 describes, feeling like we're in a pit, sinking and losing ourselves. Our souls can often feel inadequate because we're aware of how far we sometimes are from living in God's ways. I think that's what Isaiah feels. We don't manage to live up to our values all the time. We mess up, we fall short, and we sometimes call that sin. Our soul and spirit is also caught up with our sense of meaning and hope. Again, sometimes we can lose sight of that because of what happens to us, to people we love, and to the world. I suspect that Jesus' friends in that room in Jerusalem were struggling to find meaning and hope after Jesus had died. Many of us feel inadequate in our souls and spirit. We don't feel whole in body, mind, and spirit. Yet what Jesus wants for us, what God wants for us, is wholeness, peace, Shalom. That's what Jesus says, peace be with you. And I think our readings today show us that God really means that because God acts out of God's incredible love for us and for the world. God acts to bring us greater shalom, greater wholeness in body, mind, and spirit. But most importantly, I think we should recognize that God loves us no matter how inadequate we are or feel. God loves you, God loves me, God loves us all, no matter what. God doesn't need to fix us first, God loves us first. And out of that love, God welcomes us, helps us, and invites us to join in God's amazing work of love. God comes to us in our inadequate bodies, and God says, me too. God came into the world in the very inadequate body of a human baby, totally reliant on others to survive. He was born out of a woman's body. He grew up with the same needs as all of us, for food and drink and sleep, for laughter and tears and community. And even when he comes back in new life, he says, look at my hands and feet. See the wounds. See the scars. Jesus knows about pain and struggle in a human body. God shows love and solidarity with our inadequate bodies by being born, living, dying, and being raised in one. And in Jesus, and long before, God helps meet the needs of human bodies, providing food, whether in the desert to a wandering people or the lone Hagar, or over a fire on a beach with friends, or around a table in Jerusalem. And Jesus touches people, often people who others wouldn't touch. And Jesus heals impairments that held people back from the fullness of bodily life. God meets the needs of our inadequate bodies through feeding, healing, and touching people. God comes to our inadequate minds, and God says, that's okay. It's complicated. Even as God tells Isaiah there's a message to share, God acknowledges that it won't be easy to share, hear, or understand. 
we are frequently reminded that God's ways are not our ways. And Jesus makes it really clear that God's welcome and love are not conditional on our understanding anyway, ever. The smallest child is welcome. All are welcome and loved. God loves us with our inadequate minds, knowing that there is much that will always be beyond our understanding. But because our minds are an important part of who we are, God also tries to help us to understand. The risen Jesus spends time with his friends, trying to open their minds to understand what people have glimpsed and written about God over the centuries. One role of the Holy Spirit promised by Jesus is to help people understand God's ways and Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. And Jesus was always open to questions, no matter how frustrating, from the people who followed him. God meets the needs of our inadequate minds, teaching, explaining, and unraveling word and mystery. And God comes to us in our inadequate souls and spirit. As Psalm 40 puts it, God listens to us however dark and difficult things feel. As Isaiah's vision shows it, God offers a symbolism of a coal to the lips to demonstrate God's forgiving our mistakes and falling short. As Jesus repeatedly shows in word and action, God knows and understands us, coming to us with compassion and forgiving us. God loves us and forgives everything that keeps us from God's ways, giving us another chance and another chance and another chance over and over again to come close and live with God. And the transformation God brings to us is not just a negating of past mistakes, but an invitation into a living future with God. We are lifted up from the pit and given a new song to sing, sharing God's message of love. Isaiah is symbolically cleansed, then given a role sharing God's message of love. Jesus meets his friends, offers them peace and forgiveness, teaches them, and gives them a task as witnesses to God's love. God meets the needs of our inadequate spirit, freeing us from whatever harms us, and inviting us and sending us to share God's love, hope, and freedom with others. Who am I? It's a really big question. One answer is that we are each a whole person, body, mind, and spirit or soul. Yet we are very human bodies, minds, and spirits, wounded, broken, falling short of our hopes. We feel inadequate. But God loves us in our inadequacies. God wants to meet the needs of our bodies, minds, and spirits. And God invites us as we are and as God will help us become. God invites us to live fully and wholly, which includes sharing a message of love, transformation, and wholeness with others and in the whole earth. And why do I believe this? Because Jesus sees, because God sees, peace be with you. Amen. We are here at this table. Whoever you are, this table is spread for you. Whatever you have done, this table is spread for you. Whatever your faults or fears, your faith or doubt, this table is spread for you. However your body, mind, and soul feel, this table is spread for you. Whoever you are, wherever your journey may have taken you, this table is spread for you, and Jesus invites you, invites us all, to come. And we're going to sing another Easter story that leads us through the story to this meal we are about to share through the Easter story to Jesus inviting us to come and be fed. It's hymn 434 in the book. It's on here. It's a very simple wee tune, so Chris will play it through once and then you've got...
about seven verses to get the hang of it, but it's a very simple wee tune. Jesus is risen from the grave. We are here because Jesus has invited us. When Jesus was on earth, he often enjoyed meals with his friends. On the night before he died, when darkness was beginning to fall, he sat at a table with the disciples in an upper room in Jerusalem. At this last supper, he broke bread and took wine and told his disciples to remember him by following his example. Today, we are his disciples. And we are glad to do what he has told us. So now following Jesus' example and command, we take this bread and this wine, the ordinary things of the world which Christ will make special. And as he said a prayer before sharing, let us do so too. I invite you to join me in prayer. Gratitude, praise, hearts lifted high, voices full and joyful. These you deserve, O God of all. For when we felt we were nothing, you made us something. When we struggled with our faith and our future, you called us your children. When we lost our way or turned away, you did not abandon us. When we come back to you, your arms open wide in welcome. And look, you prepare a table for us, offering not just bread, not just wine, but your very self, so that we may be filled, forgiven, healed, blessed, and made new again. You are worth all our pain and all our praise. So now in gratitude we join our voices to those of the church on earth and in heaven, 
singing your praise. Yet, God of all, as we come to share the richness of your table, we cannot forget the rawness of the earth. Open our minds, bodies, souls, and lives to your ways of love and compassion, peace and justice. We cannot take bread and forget those who are hungry. We cannot take wine and forget those who, are th who thirst. God, use what we have in the service of others and help us to hunger and thirst for fairness. We cannot hear your words of peace and forget the world at war. Show us quickly, God, how to turn the lust for power into a desire for peace and grant us and all who need it your peace in times of fear and loss. We cannot celebrate the feast of your family and forget our divisions. We are one in spirit, but not in fact. God, heal your church in every brokenness and turn our attention outwards to love your world. God with us. For us you were born, for us you healed, preached, taught, and showed the way of life. For us you were crucified, and for us, after death, you rose again. And while we do not feel fit to gather up the crumbs from under your table, with you is mercy and the power to change us. So as we do in this place what you did in an upstairs room, send down your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us your body, healing, forgiving, and making us whole and that we may become for you your body, loving and caring in the world until your kingdom comes. And we gather ourselves and our prayers in the words you taught us, whatever words bring us closest to you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Among friends, gathered round a table, Jesus took bread and broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Later, he took a cup of wine and said, This is a new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take it, all of you, to remember me. So now, together, wherever we are, let us take and eat. Not because we must, but because we may. Because Christ loves us and invites us to love him in turn, let us take and eat. And together, and together, wherever we are, let us take and drink. Not because we ought to, but because we can. Because Christ who died invites us to share his new life.
peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. On the evening of the first Easter day, when the disciples were together behind locked doors from fear, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he showed them his hands and his side. On seeing the Lord, the disciples were overjoyed. And Jesus said again, Peace be with you. In the joyful presence of our risen Lord, then, let us give one another a sign of peace. You may want to smile, offer the namaste sign, shake hands or hug, as you and others around you are comfortable. May the peace of God be with us all. And peace be with those at home. pray. Lord Jesus, you have put your life into our hands. Now we put our lives into yours. Take us, renew and remake us. What we have been is past, what we shall be through you still awaits us. Lead us on. Take us with you. Amen. Our closing hymn echoes the words of Isaiah as God invites our participation in God's ways coming close on earth. Here I am, send me, Isaiah said. I, the Lord of sea and sky, hymn 251.
Look at your hands. See the touch and the tenderness. God's own for the world. Look at your feet. See the path and the direction. God's own for the world. Look at your heart. See the fire and the love. God's own for the world. Look at the cross. See God's Son and our Saviour. God's own for the world. This is God's world, and we will serve God in it. May God bless you. May God keep you ever with great care and lead your lives with love. May Christ's warm welcome shine in our lives and peace in heart and home prevail through every day till greater life shall call. Amen.